Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It is an honor, as a president of the Oxford University Islamic Society, to be able to welcome you all here today in the most prestigious of venues for what is most certainly a magnificent occasion. My task here today is to introduce us, your hosts, the Oxford University Islamic Society. I'm meant to explain who we are, what we do, and how we fit into the university at large. But I would like to take an unconventional route, if I may, by first drawing attention to our attire this evening, the so-called sub fusk the official academic dress of the University of Oxford. The sub fusk is an inter integral part of any Oxford student's life, and we wear it during ceremonies or events of great magnitude. We wear it when we matriculate and are accepted into the university. We wear it when we graduate from the university. We wear it for exams, for official meetings, and sometimes even to dinner. It is the highest level of clothing we can display, and so we wear it today. We wear it to honor this occasion. We wear it to honor our speakers, and we wear it to honor you. Many people think, and I'm inclined to agree, that the sub fusk is beautiful. Others, however, think it makes us look like penguins. <laughs> despite what people may think of the sub fusk, it is intriguing to discover that despite it being an age-old Oxford tradition, it does not originate in Oxford, nor even in England. Instead, it takes its roots from the universities and the madrasas of the Islamic world, which predate Oxford. The gown is the equivalent of the robes of the madrasa student. The mortarboard, which I now hold in my hand, and which we cannot wear until we graduate, symbolizes the Quran, which, grad which graduates in the Muslim world used to tie to their heads at their graduation ceremonies. Similarly, whenever we are in sub fusk, we are to carry the mortarboard, just as students in the Islamic tradition are used to continually carry their Qur'ans with them. The right to put it on one's head coming only at the end of one's study, when they are worthy of such an act. So when we wear these clothes dating from ancient traditions, we are aligning ourselves to the shared traditions of Oxford and Islam. Whilst the world changes around us, Oxford remains the same, holding fast to our shared values of truth, creativity and freedom of thought. Just as sub fusk does not change, we believe that Oxford and Islam remain unchanging at the center of positive change. Accordingly, we continue to strive to be that positive change. In Hillary term alone, we hosted one of our speakers tonight, Tariq Ramadan, in Oxford's most famous debating chamber, the Oxford Union, to talk about jihad. We also hosted a seminar in polygamy in the home of the world's most prestigious scholarship, Rhodes House, and a workshop on Islamic art in Britain's first museum, the Ashmolean. Is it not then appropriate that today we are holding rethinking Islamic reform, the most pressing issue in Islam, here in the Sheldonian Theatre, the most prestigious venue in Oxford? This level of excellence which we strive for is down to the hard work and vision of our members. I would then like to take this opportunity to thank my team for all that they have done for this event and for making all of this possible. I once again welcome you to Oxford and I hope you enjoy the evening. Thank you very much. Thank you, Aminul.